Hi, I'm going to show you how to um, download your images from Dropbox and analyze them in ImageJ using a program that is called Fiji, which is just a version of ImageJ, ImageJ with, the, with the batteries included as all the stuff you usually need. So first of all, let's go over to Dropbox. And I have a file here from that was uh, collected the other day. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, download that, open it up in ImageJ. So I'm going to go over to this um, little bar here for download. And I'm going to open it up with Fiji. So I already selected that. Um, but you could select ImageJ on, on your computer. And it opens that up in Fiji. And then I'm going to go back to Dropbox. And I will open up the other, uh, the other, so that was a Rotamine channel. I'll, I'll open up the, the DAPI channel here. So it's going to be which one is which. And there's the DAPI channel. And I'm going to then download it, open it up in Fiji. And so we have everything opened up in Fiji, or it can be image J, same thing. And what we're going to first think about is the fact that I, I want to uh, I want to merge these two images. I want to set them to particular colors and merge them. But first of all, I'm not interested in anything else but these these cells right here. So I'd like to crop these cells, but in order to crop uh, and merge, you have to crop exactly for these two panels. So to do that, I'm going to put these panels in the same, um, in, in what we call a stack, which is a arrangement of, of panels such that if you do one function on one panel, it will do it on any, every other panel. So to make a stack, what you want to do is you want to go to image, uh, stacks here and then images to stacks and we'll just call it a stack and so what we have here is a stack uh, it's what we're looking at is the first of two images in the stack so there's the rhodamine channel there's a DAPI channel and then I'm just going to um, select with a rectangle here this region of interest that has these cells smaller and then if I go to image and crop it crops it so that here we have our two cells and it's not only cropped uh, the, in the rhodamine channel it's cropped it exactly the same in the DAPI channel so then what I'm going to do is independently uh, set up lookup tables for each of these images so I want to separate these two images so I'll go back to images and stacks and then I'll go and do stacks, stack to images. And then we have these two, um, two images separated. And then I'm going to uh, just um, play, with, uh, play with the lookup tables, which are different colors. So, it, so we'll first think about the, the, the rhodamine channel here. And if you go to image and lookup tables, what I'm going to do, and I decided this beforehand, is I'm going to use a, um, a lookup table called Red Hot, which is something I sort of like because what it does is it, uh, it uh, gives, uh, as you get brighter and brighter pixels, the colors change from red to this yellow to white. And the other thing I'm going to do with this particular image is I'm going to actually increase, um, I'm going to sharpen it up because I'd like to see these, these actin fibers a little bit better. And to do that, well, first of all, we'll just blow this up. So I'm going to, I'm going, fighting with my cat right now. Um, I'm going to blow this up so we can see it a bit better. But you can see those, I want to have a little bit more contrast in there. So I'm going to 
do a process that's called um, it's called uh, um, uh, unsharp mask, and it is in filters under process and unsharp mask. And what unsharp mask does is it takes a blurred image of your it makes a blurred image of this particular uh, image, and then it's going to subtract it out away from the original image. And what it does is it removes um, basically uh, mushed out pieces of your image. And I'll show you what it looks like. So we'll just do an unsharp mask with a radius of 2 and a mask weight of 0.6. Pretty light one. You see how it changes that? Makes it a little bit sharper. And Im importantly, it doesn't really change the, the boundaries of, of, these, um, of these structures. So you're you're, you're still seeing the same structure. It's not a we've mucked around with the data, so you wouldn't want to ever analyze this. But it's uh, it makes it a little bit easier to see. It's an on, off, on, off, on, and we'll okay that. And then what we're going to do is go over to this guy here, and we're going to make this a color scheme that will be very contrasty against the uh, this red. And so green is a really great color for that. So I'm going to go to Image, Lookup Tables, and I'm going to select green. And then to, to merge these images, what we'll do is we will um, go to Image, over to Color, over to Merge Channels. And in Merge Channels, they have these various channels that are assigned different colors. But if you've already assigned a lookup table, then it's going to keep whatever lookup table you have assigned to it. Although if you select ignore source lookup tables, then it won't pay attention to that and will assign it according to what it sees here. So we'll do the first um, channel is red, although it's not going to be red. The second channel as green because we're going to use the existing lookup tables. And we'll OK that. And what we see here is a um, a composite with the red and green merged together. Now the green is not quite as doesn't pop out as much as I'd like it to so I'm going to make it a bit brighter and so I'm just going to close this again and then I'm going to go over to the green channel this green uh, dappy stain and I'm going to change uh, the brightness and contrast here by going to image and then adjust and brightness and contrast and what that brings up is a, um, a control panel that has a histogram of the pixel intensity values ranging from 0 to about 65,000. That's because this is a 16-bit image. It has 2 to the 16th grayscale levels. What we're going to do then with this, and you can see this line that basically gives a um, how, how things are going to be um, what the output would be. So a completely vertical, a line like this is going to be an equal input output. But if I change that, and what we're going to do is move this minimum, minimum, uh, this maximum value. So now everything that was 43,000 is now assigned to 65,000. And it's also changed things here um, at the lower end, where it's also brighter, but if we go to the minimum, we can just move that over a bit, and it actually gets rid of the very low-intensity pixels you see there. And we'll just make it a little bit brighter here. And we will then we'll apply that. When we apply it, it's going to change those values. So 915 would be, now be 0, 42, 931 would now be 65,000 about. So if we apply that, then, then it actually shows a different distribution of the pixel intensity values. It's a little bit easier to see, actually. And it's brighter. So then we're just going to redo this, where we're going to go to Image, Color, Merge Channels, First Channel, Second Channel. We are going to not ignore the source lookup tables. And this is a little bit 
looks a little bit better, a little bit brighter. So let's say I like that. And I want to send it to my mother for Valentine's Day. Um, so I'd like to save this. And what we have right now is um, an image that if you save it as a composite itself, it's going to be in two channels. And we just want to have one merge channel. So what I would suggest doing is going to Image, going to Type, and changing that type from a 16-bit image that was in two channels to an RGB color. RGB color is basically uh, 8 bits uh, in R, 8 bits in green, 8 bits in blue. And it gives you, a, um, it gives you something that looks more or less exactly the same but they're in this uh, different format. And then if you go to File and you go to Save, I'll say Composite RGB, and I'll just say My Composite RGB. It's probably not what you would want. And it's a .tiff file. And I'll save that there. And if we go up and we look at um, that particular file type. So here's my, my composite RGB TIFF, and there it is. All ready to send to mom. Okay, so that's just one of the things you can do with ImageJ.